Good afternoon. Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter. Our Mass this afternoon is being offered for Thomas Halpin from St. Clair of Sissy and Eleanor Crow from Holy Cross. This week's second collection will be for the cemetery company. Tuesday evening Mass at Holy Cross is now at 6 p.m., followed by confessions and expositions until 7 p.m. Grass cutting season is beginning in our cemeteries. All flowers and decorations must be removed from the graves, and please do not leave your trash. Holy Cross Kitchen is open on Thursday from 12 noon until 5 p.m. for sell-out time. See the menu enclosed in this week's bulletin. The Nativity High School is performing Something Rotten this Saturday and Sunday at 7 p.m. We are looking for new altar servers, any child, who has made First Holy Communion is welcome. Please call the rectory. Holy Cross is having a Memorial Day meat raffle on $150 worth of steaks. Tickets may be purchased here at our rectory. The Bishop's Annual Appeal is now underway. Please be generous. Anyone wishing to go to the diocesan pilgrimage on the Feast of Corpus Christi on July 19th, please call the rectory. Please pray with me, the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, who the the of God, be our protection against the wickedness of the devil. May God our be with you, we pray. And may you, our Prince of the Heavenly Host, my Lord, the power of God, be cast into the sea. And all the spirits who come out of the world and seek to be the Lord of souls. Amen. Our entrance hymn is number 447. Jesus is risen. Hymn number 447. Please rise and read by the mouth. Who have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. 
Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our hymn is number 255, Water of Life.
For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
to St. John. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is the first time I have the uh, privilege of celebrating Mass in your beautiful church, St. Clara of Assisi, here in, in St. Clara. And it's a privilege, really, to be here and to celebrate Mass for you. And you're probably wondering, who is this strange priest that we have pensioning for uh, Father Bill today? Well, my name is uh, Father Leo Mallets. I was pastor at uh, St. Matthew the Evangelist Church in Miners Home for almost 32 years before I retired almost three years ago. It'll be three years in uh, June that I am retired. And every now and then when there's a need, I'm dusted out to help <laughs> somewhere in, in a parish. And it's, it's always a, a, a thrill. And really, to be in a beautiful church, a bright and, and cheerful church, uh, is, is a privilege. But you know what the real beauty of the church isn't its ornamentation. And I'm not denigrating any of the beauty here in this church, but the beauty is you, the people of God, who've come here this afternoon to show your love for God and your love for one another. That's the beauty of our church. And I just encourage you to maintain that beauty above all. Your, your fidelity to the Lord and to the Eucharist and your love for, for one another. Now I'm of a, a vintage and that was privileged to have a, a total Catholic education. I know nothing else but a Catholic education. From grade one until my deacon year when I was ordained, uh, uh, I was a student at Mary Immaculate Seminary in Northampton, um, one of the first students to go to that seminary, Bishop Shea sent us there. And uh, I think back on that privilege that I had to be educated in our Catholic faith, and indeed it was a privilege. Perhaps I didn't appreciate some of it at the time, but when I think back to the parochial school, uh, I'm of Polish background, and we have Bernadine sisters that are teaching in this school. And they did so many things to instill the religion in, into us. You know, our religion class wasn't 45 minutes or an hour uh, each day in the morning or the afternoon. Uh, the whole day was a religion class. Somehow, some way, the sisters managed to work work religion everything uh, that they, they taught us. And to me, that was indeed a privilege. And I believe that helped me become who I am and nurtured the vocation that, that God gave me. But one of the things I used to look forward to uh, when I would go to school each morning were the stories that the sisters would tell us about the saints. Uh, that was something that we, we heard every day. But I never really appreciated uh, why uh, the sisters told us these stories. I sometimes thought that they were to pacify us, to keep us quiet, or keep us entertained for a period of time. But no, there was a wisdom behind telling us about the same. And the reason why the sisters, I believe, did that and did it so consistently day in and day out was to show us that the holiness that they, they taught us about 
was achievable, that it was possible for men and women, just like you and me, to become holy and eventually to become saints. I think we're, we're all destined to become saints. We're part of the communion of saints. We're here in the church militant here in this world. Someday, hopefully, we'll be part of the church triumphant. But you know, one of the hardest lessons that we have to learn is what you heard proclaimed today in the gospel. That new commandment that Jesus gave uh, his disciples the night before he died. He knew his betrayer was leaving the, the, the meal, uh, but he wanted to leave some words of wisdom, challenging words of wisdom to his disciples because he knew their faith was going to be shaken. And for a while, they were going to be disheartened by what happened to him and the, the sad reversals that took place uh, after Jesus' resurrection, that first persecution that broke out uh, on when St. Stephen was a deacon in Jerusalem, he knew all those things would uh, cause them grief and anxiety. But he wanted to show them what was in the essence uh, at the heart of this new faith with which he was entrusting them to be the evangelizers. And it was love. But it was a different kind of, of love than they were experienced uh, with. You and I uh, uh, experience a lot of levels uh, of love and different types of love. Or we use the word love to describe it, the kind of attraction that people have for other people or the, the, the feelings of goodwill that people have for, for uh, people. But you know, love is a lot more encompassing than either feelings or attractions that we have to other people. And Jesus unfolds for us in his life and his ministry the real embodiment of what love is. And the thing that's important in that new commandment that he gives them is he says love one another, but then he says as I have loved you, so much to love one another. So he's the difference. He's the, the, the litmus test for true love. And what did he tell us in, in uh, his, his teachings and in, found in the gospel? No greater love than this does a person have than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And not only for his friends, but for one's enemies. This is the kind of love that Jesus had, a complete and total, all comprehensive, a compre and compre uh, encompassing love, not only for uh, people that were his friends, but for every person on the face of this world. I oftentimes think to myself, as Jesus hung upon the cross, what were some of his last words? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Why did Jesus pray those words of forgiveness for those who were putting him to death? It was because he loved them. And Jesus embodies the human face of God for you and for me. He shows us what God his Father is like. And if there's anything that we can learn from Jesus' life and ministry is that he is love incarnate. Uh, there's a Christmas carol, a beautiful one, and I don't know if it's sung here. Love came down at Christmas. And I thought, how appropriate that those words aren't just sentimental words. They embody what we believe about Jesus Christ. He's the love of God that descended to the, from the ethereal heights of heaven to the, the lowliness of this world in our humanity, but for one specific reason, because God is love. And Jesus became man to bring back into a, a proper relationship the human race with Almighty God, the human race which had 
by sin estranged itself from God. And he did that because he was love. And he was the embodiment of the Father's love. And you know, one of the sad things about uh, our, ourselves when we hear these words, they say it's okay for you to talk about Jesus and loving one another and loving our enemies. He was God. We say that, okay, he was God. So it was easy for God to do those things. But remember, Jesus was our brother in the flesh. The same challenges of humanity he experienced in his body. And I think, harking back to what I said to you in the beginning, the reason why we heard those stories about the saints from the Good Sisters every day we attended parochial school was to remind us that we were capable, that are capable of loving the way that God loves. Because aren't the saints living proof of that? That they love with the love of God. They love with their friends. They love their enemies. They love everybody to the extent that they poured themselves out completely for people whom they serve, people that they sought to love their whole lives long. So we can't sell ourselves short and say what Jesus asks of us is impossible. It is a reality for all of us. But we have to determine and make a, a decision that we are going to do what Jesus commands us to do. And we do have the potential. Didn't Jesus pour out upon us his spirit in baptism in the sacrament of confirmation? Did we receive the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Those gifts were given us so that we could live our faith. And at the heart of our faith is this new commandment to love. I came across a, a story uh, that shows me what we're capable of. And it concerns uh, uh, a, a Nazi soldier at one of the extermination camps. I think it could have been Osgiecie, uh, which is in Poland today, but it was called Auschwitz by the, 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 the Germans. And you know, it wasn't only the Jewish people that the Nazis were uh, exterminating. Another proscribed group of people were the Romani, or the, the Gypsy, or Sigani, uh, as uh, they were referred to in, in Poland. Uh, they, they were considered the lowest of the low by the, the, the supermen, the German race. And you know when people came into Auschwitz, they were separated uh, for two purposes. One, a group of people, as they were separated, were destined for uh, the gas chamber. Uh, the other group uh, were uh, designated but you know, uh, women, children, people that uh, didn't seem to have the potential to work were all uh, skewed to the, the side uh, destined for, for the uh, gas chambers, which were disguised as showers. I happen to have been in Auschwitz, and I can tell you it is a horrible place to see and to think of man's inhumanity to man. And there's a uh, uh, an existing testimony to that sad reality. But there's a story about uh, a German guard who, who part of his responsibility was to usher uh, those people into the showers to be gassed to death. And something happened as he was ushering people in. He saw a small Jewish girl. You know, she'd been stripped of her clothes. The only thing that she had was her little doll baby in her hand. And you know, there's all different kinds of emotions that people had as they were going into the gas chamber. Some people were in denial, some people were horrified, some people were, were screaming and yelling, and this little girl was there bewildered and afraid. And something touched that guard's heart. And he realized he could do anything to, to change the outcome of what was intended to happen, the extermination of that child. 
child. And I'm sure he thought to himself, what could he do for that child? You know what he did? He took the child by the hand and he went into the gas chamber with that child. That brought tears to my eyes when I read that true story. And I thought to myself, that is a perfect application of today's gospel. We think we can't love, that we can't love the way that Christ loved, completely and totally laying down one's life for the people that we're supposed to love, and even for our enemies as well. Here, that Nazi soldier, something touched his heart and uh, moved him to do a most beautiful thing, to take that child unto himself, lead her into the gas chamber, to let her uh, know that she was loved and to try to help her not to be afraid. Maybe that's a, a story that maybe you could try to keep in mind uh, when it comes to uh, putting into practice the commandment that Jesus gives us in today's gospel. When we try to explain things the way he's saying, we're not God, we're not capable of doing what Jesus did. He was God's only begotten son. And so we have a special relationship a special privilege. He had strengths and potentials that we didn't have. And that's possibly true. But one thing uh, that story tells you that uh, I relate to you is that we do have the potential to love the way that Jesus loves. But we just have to reach down into the deep recesses of our heart. We have to take seriously the commandment that Jesus gave us in today's gospel. And not say that it's pie in the sky. This is the name tag of Christianity. This is the way Christians should be and are called to be. And this is how the world will know that we are Christians and will take us and our religion seriously if we take to heart that commandment that we love one another the way that Jesus has loved us. The best thing that we can do for one another as we celebrate this Mass is pray that we would all strive to live that command to the best of our ability and to live it in this terrible world in which we live in today. God created it. There's so much wonderful potential out there. But there's so much hatred and there's uh, so much unkindness and lack of love. There's so much sinfulness. Sin really is a lack of love. Lack of love for our neighbor, lack of love for our life God. But this isn't the way that things have to be. The saints in their lives teach us otherwise. There's a true life incident that I re re refer to you is also an indication that love is possible. Let's pray that our uh, fellow religionists will take that commandment to heart. And guess what? If we did take that to heart, there wouldn't be any empty seats in any of our churches. People would be drawn to God, but drawn to God through us and the face of God that they see reflected in our lives. Let us reflect God's love, and the way that we deal with one another, the way that we treat one another. May God bless you, your parish, and all those you love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I believe in my heart.
acceptable to God and Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the Lord raise the Lord raise his name, for our good and the love of all the soldiers. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant me prayer that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. With the help of your heart. We lift it up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time of all, to laud you yet and more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to all us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with bashful joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic Sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
that in mind, let us now pray. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Our is number 809, Behold the Lamb, and number 809. <laughs>
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those who have revealed the heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I'm sorry that I'm not going to be able to stay after Mass to, to greet you, but Father Bill has been doing a Mass in Philadelphia, and uh, I'm glad I have a chauffeur because I can't rush anymore. I get you know, a little bit uh, tense doing that. But I really would have liked to say hello and also to offer the uh, opportunity for confessions after Mass, but the uh, circumstances don't allow me to. Again, it was a privilege to be here. Uh, remember you're the beauty of the church and nurture that beauty. You know, and, uh, care for your fellow parishioners. Live today's gospel and you'll see as time goes on, your church will be filled to capacity. They'll be drawn here to God through you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. May you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in the right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you, God bless you. Um, thank you, Father. Our hymn is number 586. I know that my Redeemer lives in number 586.